Hello and welcome to another edition of Middleware Friday for April 7th, 2017. My name is Kent Weir and I'm here to talk to you today about Azure API Management and protecting Azure Functions. In addition to talking about Azure API Management and Azure Functions, we're also going to do a bit of a recap from the Global Integration Bootcamp. So if you saw last week's episode, I did have some footage from the New York edition of this great bootcamp, but I figured I would highlight a couple other articles that are related. Uh, first up is the Modern Integration ebook that was developed by that was developed by some of the organizers over in Europe, where they've taken the labs and actually constructed an ebook, and the BizTalk 360 team has graciously decided to host it. In addition, we also have Wagner, who's going to provide a recap of the bootcamp that occurred in Auckland, New Zealand. So let's now jump into the feature content. Now, in case you're wondering what motivated me to select this particular topic for this week, and it was really motivated by two articles. Uh, the first one, which is announcing Azure Functions Open API, or AKA Swagger Support, which is now in preview for Azure Functions. That article, in addition to an article that I've recently written for InfoQ, around Azure Functions proxies being in public preview. Now, if you're not familiar with Azure Functions proxies, of course, I encourage you to read that article, but I will quickly just summarize it for the purposes of this video. You can think of a proxy as really this abstraction layer that sits in front of your Azure Functions. Now, what the Azure Functions team has blogged about recently is that for some customers who have a lot of Azure Functions, managing all of the URLs tended to be a little bit complex and cumbersome. So what they've allowed is for developers to create a proxy that sits in front of multiple Azure Functions where you can now provide or expose a single endpoint to a consumer of your Azure Functions. And really what will happen is you have a reverse proxy that sits in between your consumer and your actual Azure Function. Now this, in my mind, feels an awful lot like API management. Obviously, Azure API management has some additional features like caching and policies, whitelisting, things of that nature, analytics, a developer portal. So you can kind of think of proxies as maybe a lightweight management layer for your Azure functions. But I thought it would be interesting to take the swagger that is now provided with Azure functions or made available and actually consume that swagger using some of the new tooling around API management. So let's go ahead and dive into the scenario and learn more about it. As per some of my other Middleware Friday episodes, I like to provide a high level architecture diagram of what I'm going to be building today. And what I have going on here is a very simple telemetry ingestion solution, which is going to be based upon RESTful APIs. Now this isn't all that far-fetched considering I do work in the energy industry. We do a lot with telemetry related to power equipment. In this sort of scenario, you typically have thousands of pieces of equipment that are going to emit some sort of a signal or telemetry using a variety of protocols. And these are protocols that are definitely not in your mainstream developer protocols. So these would be things like Modbus, OPC, OPC UA things of that nature. And what usually happens is you have some level of data collection or data aggregation across multiple devices or even RTUs. And in this case, we're going to then construct a data publisher, which will then pump these tag reads up to Azure through an API management gateway and off to an Azure function, which will in turn talk to a service bus queue. From a service bus queue, we won't get into it for the purpose of this episode, but you would typically then send that information down to other corporate reporting environments, including an, a historian. But for the purpose of this demo, we're going to take or generate some swagger for our Azure function, and then we're gonna be able to plug that Azure function into our API management gateway. So naturally, the first thing we need to do for this solution is to actually go ahead and create a function app. So I can go ahead and do that from the Azure portal. In this case, I want to use a hosting plan, which is consumption based. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new storage account as well for it. From there, I can now select new function 
and I'll do so because I can control the naming properties for this particular function. After that, I have a lot of options in terms of what sort of trigger I want to use for this function. In this case, because we are using API management on the front end, we're going to go ahead and select HTTP trigger C sharp. And I'm going to set the authorization level for this trigger to be function. And I'm going to call the function tag. And tag is just a term to represent a piece of equipment. Uh, it's used in the energy industry, at least in the power industry itself. And a tag is typically made up of a tag name, a tag value, a tag quality attribute, and a timestamp for when that tag read actually occurred. From there, I now want to click on the integrate label, and I want to set some parameters here. Now, I'm not going to expose a function app with a whole lot of HTTP methods. I'm really only interested in providing a post. So what I need to do in order to see this option is I need to go ahead and click on the drop down for allowed HTTP methods, and then I can go ahead and click post and then click save. Here's a very simple outline of my code for my function app. Here I just have a strongly typed class called historian tag. I'm going to I'm going to provide a connection string for a service bus queue. I'm then going to construct a brokered message based upon my inbound message and since this is a post, I do have a message body. Next, I'm going to send asynchronously my brokered message to the service bus queue. I'm doing a little bit of logging, just getting the tag name and writing that out to the log console. Then because it is a task, I'm going to go ahead and wait for it to complete. I'll then provide a status based upon the task status property. And then I'm going to provide a response back to my caller, essentially saying the tag read has been processed for my tag name. So nothing overly complex. Obviously, this isn't overly important in the grand scheme of things for this demo. Next, I want to click on API definition, which is at the bottom left hand side of the page. I want to identify my API definition source as being internal. And then I want to click on the load generated API definition. And what this is going to do is it's going to provide a basic skeleton for my swagger definition for my API. Now what I have gone ahead is I've gone ahead and constructed or completed defining my swagger, which includes a data type called tag, which is going to be referenced as part of this uh, schema ref. I'm updating the description. Since we're dealing with a post, I have a inbound message body, which is just going to be called body. I have a HTTPS scheme. And I'm also expecting an API key. Now, in order to go ahead and use the Swagger editor, I do need to ensure that my authentication has been set. And I need to go ahead and do so by clicking on the change authentication label where I can go ahead and provide a key. And I can get the key from my function app under develop and then expand the key section and then click on the click to show label where I will now have my key which I need to paste back into this screen around the authentication button. Once I have that in place, I can go ahead and provide a sample body and then go ahead and click the send request. And what will happen is I will see this tag read process is set to the tag that was actually set itself. Now, don't worry too much about this cross origin call because functions.azure.com has already been enabled for cores. So this is a warning, but you won't actually get burnt by this. Now, if I go ahead and test this, I will see that I have a message being dropped off in my tags queue inside of service bus. So I would recommend ensuring that your Azure function is working as expected before you start to dive into the API management portion of the solution. Next up, we do want to go to the API management section. And for the purpose of this, episode, we are going to use the preview features once again. I prefer this over the older portal, not that the older portal is bad, but 
I, I really like the the way they've set up the different stages of the API lifecycle inside of the new portal. So I'm going to continue to use that wherever possible. I want to click on APIs dash preview. And then this may look familiar if you saw episode one of Middleware Friday, where what we did was we were able to ingest a logic app and protect it using this sort of a wizard. Now, in this case, even though function apps are coming soon, because functions now support Swagger or the Open API specification, I can go ahead and use this feature to actually import the metadata for my function app. And that's really the whole crux of this whole of this episode is the ability to ingest the Swagger metadata. Now, something that we need to provide when we want to import our Swagger definition is the definition URL for Swagger itself. So this is back in the function app where we can go ahead and get the API definition URL for our function app. And then what we'll go ahead and do is provide that as a parameter for our open API specification. I can also add additional metadata, suffix URL, etc. Go ahead and click on create. And when I do so, I now have my function app being brought into my API management environment. We can see the backend endpoint, and we're going to have some vanilla policies around inbound and outbound processing. But we do need to make some changes, so go ahead and click on the pencil for front end, and then we want to click on the form based editor. And in this case, what we're really interested in doing is to provide a sample request message. And we're going to go ahead and use this when we get to the developer portal and we test our API. So all I'm doing here is taking my sample message, the same message I would have used previously when I was using the Swagger editor inside of the Azure Function app portal. And so I'm just going to paste this message, click on save. And now when I go ahead to use the developer portal, this will get pre-populated for me. After that, we want to focus on inbound processing. Once again, clicking on the form based editor, which is in the pencil drop down. And I need to set two headers. The first header is content type application JSON. The next is my function app API key. This is the same API key that we discussed when we were talking about the Swagger editor in the function app portal. But I need to provide this X functions key header and then that exact, that same API key as the value. If you don't set this, you're going to get a 401 unauthorized access error. With that configuration in place, we do have our function app wired up to API management. But now what we need to do is we need to be able to associate our account to a product so that we have a subscription key being populated when we're in the API management developer portal. So click on products preview and then go ahead and click on a product or you can create a new one if you wish. But for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to select starter. I will then want to click on APIs followed by add. I'll then select my API, which is called tag API. And that's it. We've now configured our Azure function to be protected by API management. We could add other policies if we really want to. It's not necessary in this case. And then what we've done is we've actually taken our API, associated it to an actual API product, which will then allow our account to go ahead and call this API. So now I'm going to switch over and we'll do a live demo going through the developer portal for API management. So let's go ahead and run through a demo. Right now I'm in the Azure portal. I'm in my actual Azure function app. Here we can see the code. If we want to go ahead and test it, we can go ahead and do that by clicking on run. We'll see that a tag has been processed. And if we go to Service Bus 360, we can go ahead and look at the message. And 
and see sure enough that a message was sent to the Azure function subsequently put on the service bus queue where we can go ahead and inspect the message itself. So now let's jump over to the Swagger editor as that's now available as part of Azure Functions. Now what we have is the actual description of our API itself. And we have essentially a testing harness where we can go ahead and try this operation out. So we'll let's provide a tag name, call this x1234, the tag quality is good, the tag value is 1.23, and the timestamp doesn't really matter, the format here, so we will go 04062017, and then we'll hit send request. So in this case, it is unauthorized, so what we can do, head over to the function settings, go over to keys, I'll go ahead and renew that once we're done here, head back over to the API definition, we'll go ahead and authenticate, we've done that now, we'll go ahead and try the operation. So x1234, the quality is good, tag value is 2.3, Send the request in and we see that it was successful. Now we're gonna jump over to the API management instance and this is, once again, in the new portal. I can go ahead and click on APIs Preview. And we're going to see, essentially, the pipeline for my API in the various stages of it. If I wanted to change any of the policies, I could go ahead and do that from these various screens by clicking on the drop-down and selecting either the form-based editor or the Open API Specification Editor. But we've gone through that already, so let's go ahead and test our API, or more specifically, our Azure function. Now here's the developer portal. I'm gonna go ahead and click on APIs, and we're gonna see the tag API, which we had just constructed. Now we can go ahead and try it. And as you recall earlier in the video, we had provided a sample message, so that's why it's being populated here. We had created a subscription key as well, so now we can just simply go ahead and try this. Let's just make this unique. X234, I don't know, 555. We'll go ahead and click send. We can see that it took 782 milliseconds and we have an HTTP status of 201. Let's head back over to Service Bus 360 now we should have 17 messages in here now, and we do. So let's go take a look at the last message. And sure enough, we have the tag name that ends in 555. So that's a, a very quick walkthrough of how you can take an Azure function, decorate it with Swagger metadata, and then suck it into Azure API Management where you can take advantage of other API management features in order to protect and enhance your Azure functions. Let's now jump into some community content. So the first piece of content we wanna look at is the Global Integration Bootcamp Modern Integration eBook, which is hosted on the BizTalk360 website. Now, within this eBook, the authors Eldert, Rob Fox, Steph Jan, and Tommaso work together on a series of labs, which they made available to the different presenters worldwide. And for those that were unable to actually attend the Global Integration Bootcamp, you now have the opportunity to 
do the same labs that many of the same labs that folks worked on during the global integration boot camp. So it is free. It is a PDF, simple PDF download. You do have to provide your first name, last name, and email address, but you will get some good content as a result. And you will get some hands-on experience with BizTalk 2016 and Azure integration. And the next piece of community content is a write-up by Wagner coming out of Auckland, New Zealand, and his experience with the Global Integration Bootcamp down south. So here's the, the link itself, and he just goes through and provides a nice recap of the experiences that the attendees would have encountered. Uh, he also has some links to some other folks like Mark Brimble and their BizTalk 360 blog, and basically is a nice walk through a lot of pictures around the action that took place in various parts of the world. Here we've got Bill Chestnut and Mick Badrin, uh, who were hosting boot camps in other parts of Australia. Here we have Abhishek, who would have been in, in New Zealand as well. So this is another blog post. You can see the rest of this, the, the moments on Twitter as well. But this is an interesting write-up and gives you a good, some good insight into what actually went on on March 25th. So with that, that concludes the show. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, feedback is welcome to follow me at Middleware Fry on Twitter, or you can email middlewarefriday at gmail.com. Once again, thank you, BizTalk360, for being a great partner of the show, and I'll leave you with some user credits. <laughs>